Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm going to share my screen. I just ask you to uh, maximize the screen so that you uh, see it as you know best you can, I guess. Okay. Um, here it comes. Let me see. Uh, let's go to this. Share screen. Here we go. Okay, so you can see it. Yes, we can. Okay, and you can see me on the right as well. As well. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let me go through the presentation as quickly as possible. Um, your, one of your early questions is to introduce myself and my practice a little bit. Um, I've been in the uh, uh, public art field for over 15 years now. Um, uh, I have a degree in design and art, um, and uh, I find that those combinations is very fitting in this field, and I've been practicing it since uh, a, a while now. Um, my studio practice is usually, um, um, there's some in-house, all the design is in-house, um, and then as we need, we, um, we subcontract uh, fabricators. I have my fabricators. I have several of them um, that some groups do glass, some groups do uh, uh, stainless steel, um, lighting, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, um, and I also have a, a group of uh, uh, material and... Uh, and lighting experts, uh, engineers that I work with, um, and um, they get involved in my projects uh, on a kind of uh, as as we need them. Uh, I also try to work with local crews most of the time um, when it comes to installation. Um, you know, provided that is available, but in in places like Florida, this is not going to be a problem. Uh, I know that for a fact. Um, uh, and and uh, and I've been finding it rewarding that uh, that working with the local crews, especially when it comes to installation, um, uh, in terms of uh, solving some of the issues that might uh, arise during installation. These type of uh, uh, collaborations is usually uh, much much better. Um, and. Um, I, one could say, I mean, at least Corbusier used to say, um, a, a modular logic. Um, I kind of work in that field uh, of design where uh, uh, smaller parts create a larger whole. Um, I find it uh, very beneficial uh, in very many ways um, because uh, it's, it helps with the installation, helps with maintenance, helps with a lot of, a uh, lot of different things. So for that kind of um, uh, example, let's say, I've picked few examples, as you were asking, three of them, uh, and I'm going to show you one that focuses on lighting, um, another one that focuses on materials that respond to light. And, and another one, which is actually uh, a, a sketch um, that combines the two, both lighting and daytime presence with uh, color and, 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 uh, and reflections and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so let's, I think we're sick and tired of my face. Let's go to the next um, one. This is the first uh, example I wanted to show you. This is called the Third Bridge, which was made um, in 2007 uh, as part of the New York City's 40th year celebrations for the arts and the parks. Um, it is made in, in, or it is installed in Brooklyn Bridge Park, which is, you can see the Brooklyn Bridge right here. And on this particular shot, it's out of the uh, the, the view, but on the right side, right here is the Manhattan Bridge. So this is between the two bridges. And this was called the third bridge, referring to the idea of uh, optical fibers as bridges that connect us digitally, um, 
you know, in comparison to the uh, physical connections of, of the bridges that were kind of like the icons of the industrial age. Um, it is made of optical fibers, as I said, it's the same fibers that uh, Verizon uses to connect, um, connect even this connection, probably me to you via Zoom. Um, but it's also used as uh, lighting um, uh, um, sorry, I'm also changing a few screens at the same time. Um, lighting instrument. Um, and what's good about it is that it actually allows you to take a singular source um, and um, like this, for example, this is a light box um, and distribute that source to a larger area. So, um, and another good thing about it is that it actually carries only light. It doesn't carry, it, it, so it doesn't light up. Uh, sorry, it doesn't heat up. Um, it does not uh, carry any electric and it is completely safe with uh, water. Um, I know it doesn't snow down there, but uh, with rain or snow and, and, and things like that. So um, kids can touch it and whatever, whatnot, not that that's going to be necessarily our solution for this particular project, but I'm trying to give you some of the uh, ideas behind using this technology. Um, as you can see on this one, you know, this is connected to the light source and there's about, you know, several thousand um, uh, points of light in, in depending on how thick, how big the, uh, the, the, uh, the optical fibers you're using but you basically take one source and you distribute, it that, distribute that source to a larger area. And that is partially the, uh, the um, logic of, the, uh, of using the, the optical fibers. It's also, I mean, in a conceptual level, this part oversees uh, Wall Street right there where um, the, the, the value of the crops is, uh, is actually um, traded over the digital networks and this kind of re relates to that and there's also the uh um agnes did a uh, did a uh, crop field uh, corn, uh wheat field back in the day this also sort of relates to that uh, project in in some ways um and um, let me oh, this is a, a a shot of of relatively daytime uh, not completely noon, but it's still daytime of what they look like. As you can see, of course, um, as the as the hours pass, it will become more and more apparent. The the light will become more pungent. Um, they, these are some of the folks from Brooklyn, Brooklynites, who came out um, during the installation to help out, and they they became part of the. Uh, uh, the installation because these, you know, as I said, these are completely safe to handle. So we were able to uh, have them be part of the installation and, and enjoy that part of it, uh, of, the, of the project. This is a night shot with the uh, lights of the bridges, you know, kind of, kind of coming about. And then we have the, uh, the third bridge also lighting up. Um, and it was quite visible from the, uh, the other shore, I could even actually see it from uh, 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 an airplane that I took and landing in LaGuardia back in the day. So um, this is that. Um, this is another shot of the same uh, installation. As you can see, once you ha have that this ability to distribute, um, then you can create any form. It can be in the form of pathways. It can, people can walk around them, people can touch them and so on and so forth. Um, and the next slide is actually have nothing to do with um, Third Bridge. This is a, a, a shot of the artwork that I've done this year, which won an award. Um, uh, and I wanted to show it to you because it uses optical fibers, the same exact fibers uh, that we used in 2007. Um, I'm still using them in different formats. This is a, a 2020. And uh, as you can see, you can change the, the color of the lights and, and, uh, and uh, create a substrate and uh, thread the, uh, the, the fibers. The, the possibilities are quite, quite wide. 
Um, you change the color of the light. Um, in other words, the light source and, and the fibers change their color as well. Um, this is another shot of the same thing to give you a, another idea. Now this next project is another one that you've probably seen. Also, this is called Fragmenta. It was done for the um, uh, State of Alaska Scientific uh, Crime Lab, which is obviously a sensitive topic. And one of the, uh, 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 the goals of the project was to do something that is uplifting um, while being sober um, and, and sensitive to the topic. Um, these are um, glass panels. As I mentioned, I kind of, uh, you know, uh, think in, in those terms where each individual panel or each individual unit come together to generate a larger whole um, or a larger form. The, in, that sense, uh, in that sense, they're not necessarily monolithic, uh, but can be, can be large. Um, very good. Osman. Yes. yes. I was going to say, uh, Mr. Weiss wants to interrupt for a second. Of course, yes. Just, I'm sorry, just we're, uh, we only have 20 minutes for each interview. You're already 11 minutes into the, into the dialogue. So just uh, be aware of that. And we do need to ask the questions. Too. Okay, so I'll go uh, uh, faster in this okay. case. So this is, uh, this is another example then, um, uh, which uh, it was made off-site. Um, and then brought together onto the site and, and weld together and put together at, at, on site, as you can see. Um, the, the, the idea or the modular logic is again apparent in this, where each individual panel, um, even though they're same, they, they uh, receive light in different angles and therefore they become different colors. Um, the advantage of installing in this fashion is that um, if one of these panels break over time, which nothing broke thus far, but um, if they break for uh, whatever reason, it was a hail or something like that, we can change that panel um, and the integrity of the artwork is you know, maintained. You don't have to deinstall the whole thing or, or, or um, do something um, uh, that requires a lot of, uh, lot of time and energy. Um, as you can see, the, the form is actually also scattered to the field. This is still being, the landscaping is not done and therefore, you know, it's not really necessarily grass, but um, it's, a, it's scattered to the field and, um, and that activates a larger, much larger area than the footprint of the, of the sculpture. Um, and we have, uh, you know, beautiful colored shadows that again activate a much, much, much larger area. Um, using the sunlight during the nighttime, we use artificial lights, obviously, to 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 light it up. And uh, this is a, a shot from uh, winter because this is in Alaska, and I know it doesn't snow in Florida, but uh, we have uh, this this particular artwork went through actually a seven point one earthquake without a problem and it also went through a category two hurricane which you guys are a lot more familiar um, and did not receive any damage whatsoever um, this is the uh, a, an example of the same glass used in another um, um, installation of mine this is denver botanic gardens I wanted to show this to you because some of the concerns might be, well, what about how do you control the glare? What do you do with the too much sunlight and so on and so forth? These are um, acid edge glass. So it's the same filter, but the, uh, the reflection is much more subdued in this example. And this is uh, the, uh, the example that I wanted to show you, which I think is much more um, appropriate uh, for this project. This is something that combines the two. There's light and there's color, um, and the mod modular uh, distribution is still maintained. Um, this is a sketch, as I said. This, you know, you can uh, put these um, forms in any uh, format that 
sort of maintains a, a, a concept. Um, and uh, during the daytime, the, the glass panels actually uh, generate um, nice colored uh, shadows. Can you put these onto a, a man-made path um, uh, or can you put them on the grass? Yes, to both um, questions or concerns. And uh, they're primitive in their kind of uh, shapes, let's say. Uh, and the heights are usually, well, it was conceptualized as a, a three to four feet tall so that nobody can climb on them, uh, but they're not so um, close to the ground that you don't you need to worry about their height. Um, this is a shot of them from the side, as you can see. Um, and this is a much wider uh, distribution where it is more organic and um, and relating to some of your concerns of um, what do you do with this uh, the sprinkler system or how can you uh, go around mowing them? Uh, with a, a lawnmower if you need to. Well, the, uh, the space between them can be adjusted, their angles can be adjusted, um, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, well, um, as far as the anchoring system is concerned, I thought that, I, not necessarily knowing what the, the lawn is made of, um, or if you have escape tunnels underneath it or not, <laughs> um, uh, you know, it would be logical for me uh, to think without talking to my uh, uh, structural engineer and or your engineers um, to draw pilings um, into the to the ground and then attach or anchor uh, individual things uh, based on that, um, you know, and refrain from a large um, uh, concrete pad, let's say. And uh, uh, with that, I'll leave you. So ask me anything you want to ask. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No, no, we can't hear you. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if you have any questions that you would like to ask the art selection panel in regards to the project. Um, I do have a lot of questions. Anything but, sorry, Hilda, 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 I don't believe. Hilda, Hilda, yeah, not questions. Hilda. If he had uh, anything you, you specific want to tell the art selection panel in regards to this project of why they should hire you. Um, uh, well, the, uh, it's not necessarily very um, common of me to say you should hire me because of this reason but I think I, um, um, I would be a good candidate simply because I do to a certain degree I think understand what you're trying to achieve especially with the you know the idea of turning into a park not necessarily putting a you know uh, a monolithic or, or monumental sculpture um, but activate the area uh, possibly even um, uh, be attractive to kids or families with young kids, people doing yoga and things like that, while still uh, understanding that this is a, a governmental building um, um, and, uh, and the integrity should be maintained. So I'm just going to, um, Hilda, I'm going to go ahead. We're just going to do two of the questions. Um, mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you, the way I do the two questions, how do you propose to engage the community um, to identify their um, community needs, identity and aspirations? So how, how do you plan to engage the community, especially during times of COVID? Um, I've, I've done projects where, you know, this Zoom, well, pre previously used to be a different platform such as Skype, but um, sometimes you actually have those kind of uh, meetings in a digital environment, and we're very used to doing this. Um, I, I would think that that would be a very good way of uh, starting to understand what the community wants out of this thing. For me, and they can, they would have a, a chance to meet me and look at my some of my work and and things like that. Um, and not only during COVID, but it, it, you know, in terms of uh, carbon footprint, I try to not necessarily always fly 
to the the sites that I'm working on, or I fly there during the you know in, as a, as an initial thing, and then you know the following couple of visits can be, if if it's possible, um, then can can be on um, online, and then you know when I when we need to go back and install or you know do something on the site, we do go physically. But I think uh, to answer your question, I I think we would. Uh, start with a, an online meeting. I think that would be the, the most uh, logical. Based on that, you know, I'm sure they would generate a bunch of questions and I would generate a bunch of questions that I would ask and uh, go back and forth until we have a, a good understanding of what everybody wants. And then uh, finally, the Cultural Council, you know, we have uh, significant policies around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, so how would you how would you expand the um, inclusivity and equity into this project itself? How would you how would you engage that? Well, no, as I mentioned, I, I actually try to work with um, uh, local crews and uh, and um, uh, and designers, even um, uh, some cases as best I can, because I find it rewarding in many different ways. Um, I, would, I would do the same thing for this project if I was to work on it. I, was, I would try to work with local uh, groups. Um, I don't, as, since I'm not a governmental agency, I don't particularly have a, a uh, an, language to to uh, to uh, uh, in, involve um, diverse uh, communities but I'm myself an immigrant so <laughs> I, I think that that covers it for me uh, in this particular uh, circumstance but I, I can I can assure you we have uh, um, we have a very diff diverse culture in in our studio and um, we apply the same sensitivity to our projects um, wherever we work. So um, beyond that, if there is a certain policies that the, the local government has and they would like it to be applied to this project and they want to uh, talk to me about it, I'm completely open to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we need to ask anything else? No, I think we covered it. He covered most of the questions in the presentation. So thank you for those two. Um, thank you, Mr. Aiken. Thank you. Yes. It's nice uh, to meet you in person. Nice it was very good. Nice yes. yes, indeed. <laughs> very good to talk to you. All right. All right. Have a Bye. good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.